All right. So this is a purely a security topic. Um, more deep dive you will see only in uh, security track. But to an extent, we all should know this. That's why you know we we are going to focus on this AAA. Triple A stands for authentication, authorization, and accounting. Authentication means what? When someone is trying to access our network, or they may be logging into a device, anyone, they may try to log into this switch, or they may try to go through the switch to reach some part of our network. Anyone. When they try to do, we want to first authenticate and then allow them. First authenticate who is trying to use our network. After checking who, the switch will allow us to go inside. You may be simply pinging some device inside the, uh, inside our organization. You may be just trying to ping. Just ping. Ping is ICMP. Not Telnet or SSH. Just you will try to ping. When you try doing that, it will first authenticate you. Who is pinging? Using dot one x protocol, switch will authenticate you. And then switch will say, okay, this source is genuine source. We can grant access to this source to go through the switch to the inside of our network. <clears throat> yeah. So Authentication is verifying from whom, who is talking, that is authentication. Next is authorization. Based on the authentication, authorization is given. See, if someone is authenticated and if that someone is found as a, a owner of the company so he will be having authorization to do everything almost everything in the office he can go to cafeteria he can go to his room he can go to any any he can go through any department any doors all doors will open for his access card because he is authenticated as the owner of the company but when I am authenticated as a guest, the access card that is given to me will open only that guest area. I cannot get into production. I cannot get into manager's room without he allowing me, or she allowing me. It is only through the authentication based on which authorization is given. Authorization is giving permission to do some tasks. It's authorization. Based on the authentication, it allows you to... The, you may do the task, you may not do the task, that doesn't matter, but you are, you are permitted. That's authorization. What is accounting? Based on the permissions that you have received, what all has been done by you is what accounting. You are permitted to do any sort of show commands. You are a supervisor. When you are authenticated, it understands that you are a supervisor, so it provides authorization for you to check all the device by typing show commands, show IP route, show IP EIGRP neighbor, show um, EIGRP topology. Mm -hmm. um, uh, also, you can you can ping 
you can type all show comments show triple a show um show mac address table show our table show routing table you have n number of show commands all commands can be used by you but you may not be doing all the commands you, you may be typing few commands when you log in you want to check the statistics of the routing protocol so as soon as you log in though you got permission to type many show commands you don't type all those things you type only show eigrp neighbor and you check the neighbor status neighbor is up fine you're happy and you log out that is what considered as accounting what you have done with the authorization you have just checked the neighbor EHRP neighbor that is what noted as accounting what you have done with the authorization what all you have done at what time you have done show EHRP neighbor at what time you done show IP route at what time you wrote, you, you 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 verified show IP interface brief now time to time it it creates a record we call it as accounting so authentication authorization and accounting is what called as AAA now what we learn from this we learned that not just authentication we can set different privilege level which is called authorization not only that we can keep track of what they are doing with the authorization that are, that they have received which is called accounting so we can do these things not just authentication but in order to do these things if we use a centralized AAA server it will be more good than having this AAA configured on every switch locally we can do this in two ways no doubt but doing in a centralized way is more good than doing on every device locally me configuring this AAA on every switch is more burden for us so we can have on centralized AAA server and we will map all the switches to this AAA server so that when someone tries to log into the switch switch will first go to the AAA server AAA server will say okay grant permission when AAA server says grant permission then the traffic is allowed in if AAA server says deny switch will deny if AAA server is silent switch will also remain silent these are the three actions actually a AAA server will do permit deny remain silent remain silent is equal to deny only so what's the advantage of having a centralized AAA server we configure all the users for authentication and their privilege level which is called authorization and accounting in one centralized box and all the switches and routers will be mapped to that box for allowing any users to access our network only when that box grants permission our network device will allow the traffic to come in 
So, AAA can be local. You can also have centralized. When you have centralized advantages, you can you can add users very easily on that one server instead of adding to every switches and routers. And then you can remove a user from that one server so that you no need to go to every switch and remove. If you are planning to change the policy of authorization, you can simply go to that centralized server, change the policy for an employee. Till yesterday he was one, uh, one assistant manager, today he became a manager. So he needs to be given extra privilege you go to that centralized server and go and extend his authorization limit. It's easy when you have a centralized AAA server. Now you may you may have a question in your mind, what if someone changes the centralized server? What if someone removes our centralized server? and keeps their centralized server which has got permissions for <laughs> their user IDs not our they are not genuine people they are they are they are, they are thieves thief is bringing one AAA server a centralized server removes our original AAA server connects the AAA server with their usernames and passwords and with authorization full permission granted now none of our employees will be able to use our network even the owner will not be allowed to use uh, the network why the AAA server will not grant, grant permission it's attacker's AAA server now then your entire company will be under the hands of attacker no that's right but that will never happen. Why? If this is a genuine AAA server, if someone removes this and they, when they connect their AAA server, switches will not recognize this as a AAA server. Why? Switches have got an authentication to do with the AAA server first. This AAA server is for all our network device. That is true. So when someone tries to access our network, this, the switch is going to ask the AAA server, can I permit this guy? And when the permission is granted, only then this remote user can go inside the network. He can go inside the network. Mm -hmm. But before all this, switch should first authenticate the AAA server. And AAA server should authenticate the switches. Both should happen. First, the AAA server need to be authenticated. So what we do, you know, we go to the switches and say, this is the IP address of the AAA server. And the AAA server will share you a password. And the password is Cisco123. Likewise, we'll go to this server and say, you will have a switch talking to you from 1.1.1.8, uh, which is the IP address of the switch. And we'll tell to the radius server, the AAA server, he will come with the password Cisco123. We put this pre-shared key so that first these two guys should get authenticated each other. They need to 
trust each other. That's the first step. So attacker cannot easily come and remove this and put their server here. Not possible because they don't know the pre-shared key. And that pre-shared key will be always sent in an encrypted way. Hash. So no one can know the password. No one can sniff and get the password. It is only the administrator who configured this and this with the AAA will know the password. Fine. So far what we have seen is when someone tries to log into a, a network device or when someone tries to use our network, not only we authenticate, we can authorize, we can do accounting. That can be done locally, that can be done using a centralized server. If you are doing using centralized server, we have two protocols to support this. TACAX and RADIUS. TACAX is TCP based. RADIUS is UDP based. See both provides what? AAA function. See if you take one Windows Server, you can enable RADIUS in that Windows Server. It need not to be a special device. If you have a server operating system in one of the computers, that can be configured as a RADIUS server which provides AAA service. But for TACAX service, you need Cisco's uh, access control server, ACS. TACAX comes in a special box like a router. It will look like, like a router. ACS, Cisco ACS. Where you have a TACAX, a GUI, a graphical user interface where you can configure this AAA. TACAX plus a Cisco's idea. Radius is industry standard, everyone knows. Radius. TACAX plus a Cisco's. In the beginning, there was one protocol called TACAX, UDP based. But in the industry, they dropped the idea of TACAX and they came up with Radius. So Cisco took that same word TACAX, which is already dropped by IEEE and uh, did some changes like uh, they made it as TCP based protocol. Cisco has made it as TCP based protocol and added some more additional features and made it as TACAX Plus. TACAX Plus is Cisco's protocol to do AAA. Let's see now some difference between TACAX and RADIUS before we move further. So these are some differences between the TACAX versus, versus RADIUS. TACAX is Cisco proprietary as I said. RADIUS is open standard protocol. TACAX is TCP. RADIUS is UDP. And see the port number for TACAX. 49 TCP. 49. Easy to remember, right? 49. And even the UDP port number for radius is easy to remember. 18, 12, 18, 13. You see, it, is, it uses UDP port number 18, 12 for authentication and authorization. For accounting, there is a separate port number. 18, 13. Accounting separate. Because authentication and authorization will happen in a combined fashion. Where? In UDP. Sorry, in radius. Radius will do authentication and authorization in one go using this port number 1812. For accounting, there is a separate port number 1813. Whereas in TCP, you see the fourth point authentication, authorization, and accounting are separate, not like you saw in radius, one go. See, radius, authentication, and authorization are combined. They are done in one go. Next, 
In TechX, all the AAA packets are encrypted. See, more secure, no? All the AAA packets are encrypted. Whereas in Radius, only the password is encrypted. While the other information such as username, accounting information are not encrypted. And I was telling you, for TechX, you need a special server called ACS, Access Control Server. Whereas for Radius, you may use a Windows operating system, Windows Server operating system, or you may use ICE, that is also from Cisco. Next. TechX Plus, it provides more granular control because you got separate authentication, separate authorization, and separate accounting. But in Radius, no external authorization of command is supported. TechX Plus offers multi-protocol support. No multi-protocol support in Radius. Now, TechX is used for device administration focus. This is the important point. What is device administration? If you are if you are allowing someone to log in using Telnet SSH to a device, it is good to go for TechX. Radius is used for network access. If you are trying to allow someone to go through the network, that is network access. For network access, you may use Radius. Do you have any question? So, sir, TechX does not go to network. Access. <laughs> no, 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 it's not like that. But this is more best place to uh, fit. You can use TechX everywhere. You can use Radius everywhere. But you see, if you are using Radius for uh, device administration, you cannot do authorization separate because authentication and authorization goes together. Yeah? So, when you are trying to allow someone to log into a router, you may want to set different privilege levels, authorization levels, which is very nice to do, very easy to do in TechX Plus because their authentication is separate. Authorization is separate, which is not necessary, which is not needed when someone is trying to go through the network. Authorization is not needed when, when a packet goes through the network. Authentication and authorization like privilege level is not needed because they are going to just get routed. So this shows that where which one is more appropriate. That doesn't mean that I cannot use TechX for network access and Radius for device administration. You can, but this is the best option. Any other question? No other questions? All right, next. You see, not only TechX and Radius, you can also use local. I told you, you know, you can also use local database. You can locally configure on every router and every switch AAA service. You can also have AAA service without any authentication. No need of Radius, no need of TechX, no need of Mm, local also, but AAA will be there. Uh, uh, then, you know, there is no meaning of calling authentication, authorization, and accounting when there is no authentication. What I mean is, we may have a AAA service without authentication also. Radius, TechX, without any authentication, local database, with case sensitive. These are all the popular ones. These are all, you know, for even for enabled password, you may use AAA. Line password, you may means line VTY, SSH. And this is old one, Kribosis. So, these are all the different methods of having AAA. So, when you configure AAA for authentication, example, see AAA authentication, if someone tries to log in, 
um, you may use method one that method one you can define method one maybe radius server method two if radius server is unreachable method two may be my tacax server if that is also unreachable i may say no problem just allow him inside method three so we may use any of this as the method right so that's about AAA we need to do one lab on AAA before we move further uh, with 8.2.8.2.1x dot 1x is also um, same like AAA this provides the axis for Nexus after authentication using an authentication server that can be a triple A with this. Yeah, we'll talk to, we'll talk about eight dot two dot one x later. First we need to do triple A. Yep. So we got a server whose IP address is ten zero zero three uh which should be reachable from these two devices at least. These are the two devices which is in our network. Usually user will be in different network, but I'm not focusing on that part. I'm keeping everyone in same network. So if I ping from this switch now, I should be allowed to ping uh, the AAA server so that I can do AAA with him. This is the IP of a AAA server. I do. Like us from this router. I should be pinging the AAA server. Yes. Fine. Now, idea is this. If this user wants to tell it to this switch, switch should not simply allow him by checking local database. It should check the AAA server. Only if AAA server grants permission, the telnet should happen. Likewise, telneting router also should be granted by this triple server that's our idea so for that let us go and enable first telnet on this two device line with device zero login this i'll show you the difference we are going to use login via not local we are going to use triple a service but first let us use login local and see whether it works it will work normal not triple a this is without triple a username abc password abc So if now when I try telnetting, the telnet will happen. Telnet, telnet to 10.0.0.2. Username ABC, password ABC. I'm inside. See, I can see switch one. Exit, back to PC. Likewise on the router, Line VTY zero login local login local username APC password APC. See, we are configuring this username, password, username, password, and every device. You got only one user. If you have many users, will you do this? very difficult that's why we need a centralized server anyway before we go to the centralized one let us tell that and see whether I'm able to tell the 10.0.0.1 yes I do ABC ABC I should see router you see I can see router A so we have done simple basic telnet with local authentication which we don't want now 
we want a centralized authentication authorization and accounting we are going to test only authentication similarly authorization and accounting which will be learned in security track now for authentication what what is our concern why are we learning this if we need triple server what configuration you need to do on the switches that's the main aim here what config they have not for they have not showed the configuration in this presentation uh, this is the only thing that they have shown you uh, after that they go to the next topic mm, but we will see in detail the configuration now I'm going to the switch and say triple A new model I'm sorry the switch don't support so we got another switch now this switch should support triple A you see the triple A new model command this triple A new model will enable the feature triple A next is we need to know what method we are going to use are we going to use TACX or radius first of all we need to configure TACX or radius let us assume TACX is configured let us assume we are going to configure now sometime if TACX is configured I need to say triple A authentication for login if someone is trying to log in he may be logging through SSH or console or teller, whatever the login. Login default. Default means what? Anything. Telnet, SSH, console, any login. If someone tries to log into the switch, he need to be authenticated using method login group. What group? TACAX group. TACX plus I have said you should use you should contact the TACX server but I have not said where is TACX server so let us say TACX server is located in 10.0.0.3 address see this is the part that we need to learn in this course our course is not focusing on CCIE security this is enterprises you need to know on switch side what need to be configured if a security engineer has got a TACAC server in our environment. What you, are, what you are seeing is what important. I'm saying for authorization I'm going to use TACAC plus. And TACAC server's location I need to put. The security engineer will give the IP address. We need to put that in our switch. TACAC server 10.0.0.3. Um, TACAC server host 10.0.0.3 and you remember I was telling you first of all we need to authenticate our TACAC server what is the pre-shared key uh, I'm going to say Cisco123 it's the same key the TACAC server also should have so that first switch will authenticate the genuine TACAC server then only it will be helping to authenticate the outsiders fine done now you see I'm going to the TechX server services AAA servers and I don't want radius I want TechX TechX what is the client name client name is switch just some I'm giving switch one it can be any name it can be any name just like that I'm giving switch one but IP address is important client will be coming from 10.0.0.2 from there he will come with the TACAX and what is the security password that we gave there Cisco123 Cisco123 three. Cisco three. was there any capital C no Cisco 123 add finish so this is just to authenticate the switch and switch authenticating the server now what is the user I should allow if someone is trying to log into the switch with a username with a username 
Johnson. With a password, buds. You can allow him. <laughs> the username should be Johnson. Password should be buds. So if someone tries to use TACAX, come from that particular address, trying to access that particular address, um, then you may allow him. Others cannot be allowed. Fine, done. It is done. Now let us go and enable here line VTY zero. Right. And then we are going to have logging. No logging. Let's simply try to log in now. Now I'm going here and I'm going to say telnet 10002. Okay, it's already working. So you don't need to say anything under line VTY because we have, you remember, we have put the command default. When we configure AAA, we say default. It can be any login. So I'm telnetting to this 10002, it is asking me the password. And if I give Johnson and password as bud, I'll be inside. No? Again. Johnson. Buts. I forgot yes before. See, I'm inside the switch. Triple A is working. We don't have the Johnson and Butts anywhere configured in the switch, have we? No, nowhere we have configured that. We do, we put those things only on the Triple A server. Here. Yeah. Now I'm adding another user. Job. Password Job Now I can go out of this and try deleting again Job will be allowed mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm inside So centralized way you can control likewise we can also do triple uh, with radius similarly like what i did with the tacax you need to go and configure radius do this exercise today and come so that we will go to the next topic dot one x most important thing in this class what you need to remember is on a switch how i am going to include triple a this is the command. If it is radius, you put radius. If it is tech X, you need to put tech X. And then you need to enable AAA method. If you are using tech X, then you say tech X. If you are using radius, you use radius. You can use both also. Enable new model. Yep. Yeah. This is not all about AAA. This is the switch side and the routing routing switching side of AAA. Security side, we need an access server. See, this I am just using one simulator. This will be an access server or ICE. Um, that's another big course. Any question? Kindly try doing this. We'll meet in next class.